us. There's nobody like you in all the earth. We search everywhere but couldn't find this great and wonderful God in all things we've done. But we found you in Christ. We found you in Jesus. Heavenly Father, we found you through Christ. We give you the glory. We give you all the honor. Encounter, let's give Jesus your best praise. Let's give him the glory. He's wonderful. There's nobody like him in all the earth. There is none like him. Unashamed declarations of our appreciation to you, Father. We give you the glory. We give you all the honor. For well, there's nobody like you. Somebody just say with me, nobody but God. Nobody but God. Say it with some passion. Nobody but God. Give the Father a warm and counter welcome. The glory to God be the glory. Look what God has done. Look what God has done. Hey, look what God has done. <laughs> Nobody but God. <laughs> Lord, we just love you. Sometimes we forget <laughs> that your love makes us just makes us more hungry for you even when you rebuke us your love makes us repent quickly oh you're so wonderful thank you Jesus amen you may be seated if you can and just give Jesus one more time a hand of praise amen let's give him one more time a hand of praise hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> This is it, because this is that. Hallelujah. Can you give the worship team a hand of praise? Amen. Lord bless you. And then I want to honor Prophet Leon and Prophetess Esther Lee. Can you give them a hand of praise? Just wonderful, just wonderful what God is doing. Amen. And at this Voice of God conference, I want to acknowledge the presence of all the grace gifts of Jesus. You know, a gift is not something you work for. A gift is something you receive. You don't study to be an apostle. You don't study to be a pastor. It's the grace gifts of Jesus. And he didn't give it to you before Calvary. He gave it to you in his resurrected form. The church is about to enter an environment where you'll be carriers of the glory of God because Jesus is not coming for a church that is not successful, victorious, overcoming. I mean, just think about it. The best bridegroom is building the best wife on the earth. Oh, yes. And I say it like others might have said it before. God has never had a bad day. You might have a bad day, but God doesn't have a bad day. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. He's the same. If you meet Him today, He still raises the dead. He still heals the sick. He still casts out devils. He's still the same God. Nothing has changed. He's the immovable God. He's the immovable God. He's steadfast and immovable. Yet... All movement comes from Him. He's immovable, but everything moves from Him. How many of you know the throne room was never empty? God never came to encounter. He takes encounter into His presence like that. The throne room stays occupied. Otherwise, the angels can't say holy, holy for somebody who's not there. No, no, we just don't understand when it comes to a twinkling of an eye what God does. 
Your worship takes you out of this place and in a moment like that, puts you in the presence of God. And then worship becomes intimate. Why? Because worship in heaven is by revelation. So every time the angels looked at him, we say, holy, holy, holy. But I know in the original language and from the Hebrew mindset, it's not holy, holy, holy. Holy has got a lot of, the Torah has got 70 faces. Every time you look at the scripture, a different revelation comes out of it. So when the angel says, holy, 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 they also saying, set apart, set apart, set apart. But beyond set apart, they look at the one who sits on the throne and they go to one another. Because that's what Isaiah saw. They say one to another, different, different, different. We are moving into compelling meetings of the Holy Ghost. The love of God, the power of God. And you know what's going to be nice? Some of you are going to sit from the back to the front. <laughs> it's like I can hear a report from demons to Lucifer saying, We tried. Never worked. Never worked. We tried to mess up their families. The families are better now. We tried to mess up their businesses. The businesses are better now. We tried to kill them. They get resurrected. Every time they down, we find they got up again. We're just not winning. We're just not winning. Why? Because the scriptures is clear. I will build my church and the gates of hell. Those gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Give Jesus a hand of praise. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Have you seen? I'm so glad we're on the winning side. Amen. We, we're going to win, folk. Even the pandemic has to accept that our death is not in the pandemic. It's in the destiny of God. In fact, death needs destiny's permission before it can show up so because my mission in the earth is not finished i'm not going to be negligent i'm not going to be lost scope like i say i'm just going to get the job done amen this is the season of a generation that is rising up in the earth that's why even tomorrow i'm going to just teach a little bit we got an exciting time to establish the work that God is doing. Not because we, we can change it, but because we must recognize it. If you cannot recognize the grace of God in any man that God set up, you will not be able to be a partaker of the grace that's in them. So it's very important, not for every one of us to know who we are amongst each other, but for the body of Christ to learn the power of discernment. Because we're living in a time of many voices, many, many voices, voices of opinions, voices of justification. But I want to show you something. But before I go there, I want to acknowledge my daughter tonight. Now, can you stand? This great. God bless you. So good. It's good. Hallelujah. You see, I, I sometimes have to travel with the evidence. Okay. <laughs> it's my son's wife in our home. We don't have daughters-in-law. There's no daughters-in-law in our home. There's no also sons-in-law in my home. She's married to my son. She's my daughter, period. I, I don't find in the Bible daughter-in-law. I just find Jesus in his father's state. Remember, Jesus became a daddy. I promise you, before Calvary, just read the scriptures. If I just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. And who touched me? She comes out of the crowd and he says, Daughter, I say unto you, your faith has made you whole. That's the daddy in the master. That's the daddy. He doesn't reach you and tell you you're a church member. When you're touched by him, he calls you son. Son of the Most High God. Daughter of the Most High God. Why do you think the devil tries so hard to kind of mess with you? Because he knows sonship is more powerful than giftedness. If you are the son of God, 
He knows sons of God must be supernatural people. Because sons who carry the DNA of God the Father. Wow, man. Imagine if the DNA of my natural daddy is natural, I will also be natural. And I will die. But if my DNA comes from the Father, eternity dwells in my heart. Therefore, we function with everything in the glory happening in the now. Amen? Son, just do me a favor. Man. Just eat that drum like a poop. There we go. One more time. Right. Now you get me some strings and you just boom, 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 boom. Just go there. Right. Now watch this. Watch this. How will you know which instruments are being played? Is this, is this the drums? Why is it not the drums? It's because you gave it the name. Why can't it be drums? God never argued with Adam. When Adam said, you're a dog. Uh, you're a lion. And that's after God said, I think he needs a woman. And then God brings animals to him, right? How would you like it? Your need is not determined by you, but by God. God sees that the man is alone. I don't have to tell him my needs. He knows it. But what I need to know is what is his needs. Because I don't know. Amen. So when the difference is, it's the sound that tells me this is not a keyboard. It's the sound that tells me the voice of God is in the space. But there is no sound unless there's a presence. You have to be here to make the sound a reality. That's why in the place of prayer, you need to understand, we don't come to meetings to hear a man's voice. We come to find the voice behind the voice. Because the voice behind the voice says there's somebody bigger than Neville Goldman, somebody bigger than Prophet Leon, somebody bigger than you. And because he's bigger, wow, anything can happen. When Jesus is in the house by the Spirit of God, anything can happen. You see that? So tonight... We understand when you see us doing what God called us to do. We know you're going to persecute us. Because you didn't see God. Do you understand? So we feel it a joy for me to love His Christ, to die as gain. And I'm not saying that just lightheartedly. I mean that. Folks, it's a privilege to die for Jesus. Oh yes. They can't take us out. They can't kill us. And we don't bury Christians. We sow you corruptible we sow you not bury you and then we reap you incorruptible you are sown immortal you are raised immortal but we don't bury corruption and raise incorruption we sow you as a seed and if the seed falls to the ground and dies there must be many others that will take its place there must be many 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 others that will rise up and this generation is in the best time of what God wants is now this is the generation I want to talk to you very quickly about working miracles you see miracles is not something that happens you work a miracle look what Jesus you must always just stick to Jesus I promise you he's brilliant in fact, when the Holy Ghost gets hold of you, I, He turns fools into geniuses. That's the Holy Spirit. He makes a genius out of a fool. I'm, a, I'm one of them. Right? I don't know what He's going to do, but when He does it, wow, I just step back like and then I say, nobody can do this. How do you, how do you explain that you are busy preaching? And in the middle of the ministry, the Holy Ghost says, uh, they are disillusioned leaders. They are leaders that nearly gave up during the pandemic because there was no church for two years. There's no income for them. They become discouraged. And before I can say, God, I'm still by Elijah. I'm still saying, the prophet Elijah had a discouragement, 
has been disillusioned after fire left heaven became disillusioned. And I'm about to tell the church, but God is going to send a raven to supernaturally feed you. I'm saying that. In my mind, before I can get to that statement, the Lord says, there's a young man there, call him out quickly. So I walk up to him. You know, church, we've been so traditionally affected by it. You even know when the church is going to end before it ends. In other words, Jesus, you are predictable. But God is unpredictable. <laughs> so while I call out the boy, the Lord says, because that's how God moves with me, and codes, names, and numbers, and things by the giftingness of the Spirit of God. So I call him up. I say to him, ah, what's your name? You know what, folk? Nobody can do this. He looks at me and says, my name. I said, yes, what's your name? Amongst all the things on the planet, my name is Raven. In the meeting, Raven out of where? So I look at him, I said, I blame your mother. Raven. And the Lord said to me, the raven is in the house. I put the symbolism here so that this unbelieving generation can believe God. Can believe God that I am present. So that instead of them seeing just the miracles, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Somebody say amen. amen. Those that are on the stream, all of the signs, wonders and miracles will be in your house. John chapter 3 verse 1 and 2. Can we just all just enjoy the word there? Say with me, there was a man of the Pharisees. Named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. There was a man. Now look at verse 2. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. You know, in one verse, the Holy Ghost puts the whole pedigree of Nicodemus together. One verse. We know that you are a Pharisee. Now let me explain something just on the Pharisaical aspect. Pharisees are people that who have to be committed to keep the letter of the law. Jesus comes out of the Pharisaical environment. That's why he's the rabbi. And it's only Pharisees that can speak to Pharisees. They don't allow anybody. One day when you go with me to Israel, I will take you to meet David, who is a Pharisee, present-day Pharisee. So when they come, when, when Nicodemus comes to Jesus and asks questions, his job is to protect the purity of the Torah. So that if anybody comes and speaks about the Word of God as to the biblical patterns of, of the Hebrew Bible, they would check out if this is heresy that they are talking and if this is genuine in alignment with the mind of God. The second part of, of Nicodemus as a Pharisee, he belongs to the Sanhedrin which is the judicial system that was placed in Rome to deal with Jewish affairs. But this, this court did not have the authority to sentence anybody to death. That's why they sent Jesus to Pilate. Because they were the only people that could sentence you with the death sentence. Now this man comes and he looks at Jesus. And of course, he says four powerful statements. Four things he says. You know, sometimes it's better to have the observation of people who don't like us. You understand because they got nothing to lose but to criticize us sometimes i feel the guys who want to criticize me i say to them man if you feel happy my job is to make sure you stay happy and if criticizing makes you happy god bless you keep going just keep going i want you to be overwhelmed with joy <laughs> that's my job that's why i i'm born to make you never give up four important things number one he says we know we know that you are a teacher. That's his observation. 
We know that's the level from which God moves is knowing. God never believes. God knows. I know the plans I have for you. So when the disciples move, they move in five levels of faith. Five levels. The more you grow in Jesus, the better it is for you to have manifestations of who He is. So that you don't become bored and backslidden because you don't know who you're leaving. You think it's some church figure. Jesus is not the leader of the church. He's the head of the church. And the anointing flows from the head, not from leadership. So leaders have to first have headship anointing, leadership anointing, and followership power. Has to come together from the head. So when you look at Nicodemus, he is saying something that needs to be captured in our time. Faith comes by hearing. So your first level of faith is through the sense of hearing. So that's why Jesus ends with John on the Isle of Patmos. Listen, church, you must have ears that hears the voice of God. And how do I know it's the voice of God? It's like I know it's my wife's voice when she phones. You got to spend a lot of time in the presence of God to know when he says it is I. It's not a lot of other people out there. You've got to identify Jesus by the sound of his voice. He just says, it's I. Others will say, it's Jesus. No, he looks at Peter and them in a storm. That's why in your storm, you got to know the sound of his voice. And the sound of his voice is not a sentence. Stay with me. So when Roji phones me and she says, uh, uh, hi, imagine I turn around and says, is that you, Roj? <laughs> After being married for 41 years, I'm still asking, no, no, the fact that we've grown together, not just fellowshipping, but being intimate. Intimacy with God produces things, not knowledge of God. There are many people who know about Him, but don't know Him. There are many that are in church, but not in Christ. So we come to church because we look for church members, because that's how they grew us up. There's nothing that has messed up an Eastern book with a Western interpretation. I mean, Jesus is not Savior, folks. Jesus is the Messiah. Now watch this. So you go from hearing, and then your part is, I believe, Lord. Then you step into the second level of faith called believing. And then God tries to take you to the third level called knowing. The disciples and the apostles never worked on I believe. No, they came from there. And they would say, we know that neither death nor life, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, things in heaven or things on the earth, things under the earth, has the ability or the power to separate me from the love of God that is in Christ. But we know, we know, as we don't believe anymore, we know that our God is about to make sure that none of these things has the power to separate us from Him. Did you not know you are the temple of the Holy Ghost? How is it you don't know? Look how Jesus says to Nicodemus, how is it that you're a teacher of the law and you don't know? He doesn't say, how is it that you're a teacher of the law and you don't believe? God works on knowing. So now we grow to know and then we get thick skinned. They try to push you, but the problem is we know. I like the song right there, that song that says, you know, we know you can work miracles, but they don't know you like we do. You see, I just love that stuff. They don't know you like we do. How many of you know nobody can break up a marriage that's overwhelmed with love? No devil is going to break up this marriage, bro. It's too late now. I'm pregnant, 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 pregnant. It's too late. I tell you, every year I have a baby. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Because from knowing to work miracles, you have to go to the next level of faith. It's called doing. So you know, 
And it's not just doing because you're in the pulpit. No, no, I'm going to the workplace and I'm going to bring the glory of God into the workplace. I'm bringing the glory of God where I am. I'm bringing the glory of God into my home. I'm going to make sure these things happen. Why? Because when you do, you will see the glory. That's the next level up. It goes from doing to seeing. Did you see how God used prophet? He doesn't just stand here. He's doing He's in the realm of the doing. And now he steps down. He doesn't know yet what's next. And as he steps into the zone of doing, the Holy Ghost says this, pick up that one, do that, pick that one up, pull that one out, move that one there. And then he looks at someone and says, no, it's not, it's not him, it's not her. No, it's not, listen, listen, no, 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 it's not Jesse's three boys. There's another boy out in the field. That's when you go as a prophet to the place of having to say, this is what God wants. The Holy Ghost comes and says, then let's wait for the one I have chosen. Look at the next thing. <laughs> that's why when you come to knowing, doing, and seeing, that's when giving is natural. You already get upset if they don't take up an offering because you came with, I saw something. I believe something I never believed before and I'm doing something I've never done before because I've had an encounter with the Holy Spirit by revelation by revelation from God look at this we know that you are a teacher and then he makes a second assessment you come from God hey. you come from God third point he makes is God is with you. Let me show you something. Let me paraphrase a little bit. You know, Jesus is first going to enter with teaching because he's got something from God. That's the revelation he gave people wherever he moved. I'll show you from the scriptures. So, <laughs> when, if Nicodemus had to paraphrase this, Nicodemus would say, you know, when I look at him, and I just look at him. I know he's here, but he somehow gives me the impression that he had a prior appointment before this one. He didn't just arrive here from a cup of tea. By the looks of it, he must have had a prior appointment. And the Holy Ghost says the prior appointment is he came from God. He didn't come from Google and PowerPoint. And cut and paste, as prophet said, he comes from the secret place of the Most High. That's why if you got the message of last night, you got to make a note of it and live in the place and say, my physical address in Port Elizabeth is 11A Bird Drive, but that's not where I dwell. My physical address has got nothing to do with my spiritual address. I do not dwell at 11A Bird Drive. I dwell in the presence of the Most High God. And it's in the secret place that I have the best meetings. It's in the secret place that I first preach to God what He tells me. And then after I preach to Him, I said, I'm going to love this for the next six months. So that if you live in me, I can lose the notes. And it will mean nothing if I lose the notes because I've become the notes. I've become the message. I've become who you said I am. The word must become flesh and dwell among us. The word dwell means you've got to get married to it. Be seated for a moment. Hey, go with me to Mark chapter 2 or Mark chapter 1. Show you how Jesus puts all of this in action. Because we're dealing with how do we work this miracle. Mm -hmm. Verse 21 says, Then they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue. Look what he does. And taught. Did you notice something with all the miracles and all the prophetic grace that is upon a prophet? Leon, you start being taught. And then he comes up here, and the Holy Ghost just does it. Because how can God honor Neville's word when Neville's word is not God's word? God watches over his word to accelerate it. He doesn't, he doesn't move with Shakespearean quotes. Hello, God doesn't move with quotes. 
God only moves with what he said. You know, you get those people, it's a nice statement, it's not bad. It's a nice for a while. If you have a setback, make a comeback. <laughs> and then you find they backslidden. <laughs> Because God didn't show up with a setback or the comeback. Because there's nothing in the Bible about a setback and a comeback. But if you say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I tell you, God will show up. When you say, behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. All of heaven is released by God the Father to accompany you to make sure his word happens. When your back's up against the wall, I am more than a conqueror through Christ who is my strength. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes. You see, if the word of God is just written, but not a revelation, you will die quoting. By his stripes you were healed, but it's not a revelation. God is not into information. He's into revelation. That's why I'm releasing the house where I'm at to open up more Red Seas for the next generation. Why? I'm now in the years of my glory, 66. Six plus six is 12. That's the apostolic race. And the number six means Adam was birthed by God on the sixth day. Jesus died at Calvary on the sixth day. Don't let them try and get you to Wednesday. It's unscriptural for the Messiah not to die on the day that perfection was created by Him. Hear me. That's why you see on Calvary's cross, He says, Father, forgive them. That had nothing to do with the Roman soldier. Neither the Pharisees, neither the scribes. Jesus does not deal with the fruit of your life. He deals with the roots. So when he says, Father, forgive them. He is not thinking about anybody standing by that cross. He's thinking about the root that brought everybody there and put him on the cross. So when he quotes, if, if the Roman soldier asked me, are you, the, are you the son of God? He would say, yes. But this is in fulfillment of Genesis 1 verse 26. Let us make man in our image and in our likeness and let them. He's talking about that them. So that he goes to the root of Adam so the rest of us can live in the glory of God. So the rest of us could be free. So the rest of our children and our children's children, everybody could have the freedom of God. The problem with this generation is the fact that we love a message, but we don't love the manifestation of the message. One hour too long with God is too much, but you could give 67 hours for that devil to mess up your marriage, mess up your children, mess up your home, because they never told you that Jesus is the reality for you. They told you, come to church, but what will you do in church if Jesus is not there? Hello, you go to a bank, you find money, isn't it? I don't know why they get upset with money. They're still in bondage to money. Money is a God of its own. Many people worship it. But in this church, we make money serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yes. Oh, yes. So he teaches when he enters the synagogue prophet. And listen what the Bible says in verse 22. They were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Have you ever been to those meetings where you've listened to a preacher every Sunday and you, you actually fall asleep because you got used to him? But Jesus, and you know what that original intent of the scripture says? He taught as one who owned the teaching, not as one who did not practice what he preached. You know, the day when preachers preach their message and they start believing it, it will be very easy for God to perform miracles. Sometimes we have preachers preach, they don't, they don't even half believe that cancer will leave. But they say, it's not by might, nor by power. You know, all that uncle kiss. But by my spirit, says the Lord. <laughs> I 
I'll never forget. Bradley, myself, and Brenton was ministering at a very conservative church. Very gently, we had to. The three of us, with Roji, my wife, we we three days in this church teaching. I make an altar call, and it's just families coming to Jesus. And while we are busy with the <laughs> with all these families uh, and encouraging them. Roger and I go into the another hall to teach them about discipleship because God didn't call us to make converts. He called us to make. You can't make something without the pattern from God. It's not about Bible school. It's about the patterns of God. One day when I come again, I will show you how God works only with three things. A law, a system, and success. If he says 8 o'clock here, the outcome must be 8 o'clock here. If that doesn't speak to each other the same language, your system is messed up. You've got 11 systems in your body that makes you have a movement. One of them not working, you're in the prayer line for, for healing. Amen? Because God wants you to be whole, to have a movement. You see, this is a movement of God. You hear me? I'm not here to try and talk about church. This is a movement from God. And you will see it go from glory to glory to glory to glory. You persecute this movement, you will just expand it. Anything you persecute in the earth grows quicker than this program orientated stuff. Let me tell you, prophet, tonight, the more they try to persecute the moves of God, the quicker these moves will grow. It will grow from glory to glory to glory. Anything of God that you persecute is an ingredient for excessive, explosive growth. My goodness. And guess what? The devil also comes to church. And in the synagogue, there's a man with a devil. Verse 23. <laughs> there was a man in the synagogue with an unclean spirit and he cried out. You see, he was teaching them. He was teaching like one that was different. But he was about to demonstrate the teaching. You see, it's not like when Paul came. And Apostle Paul says, I haven't come to you with enticing words of men's wisdom, but I've come to you in the demonstration of the Holy Ghost and His power. That is not, that is not the birthplace of the statement, Jesus is the originator of what church should really look like. For others, it's supernatural for us to cast out devils. For us, it's normal. Hmm. So in that church, we at the back, and while we're at the back, a lady runs into the hall where I'm at. She pulls me by my shirt. You know, it's one thing about hungry people. You can't ignore them. <laughs> hungry people have no manners. Believe me. That's why sometimes we do stuff that doesn't make sense. But it's okay. It does make rants if it doesn't make sense. <laughs> this woman pulls me. There's a lady. She's she's, she's manifesting. She, she's, a, she's got the devil. I said, oh, now go just tell the devil to leave. We're so busy with making disciples. Just tell the devil. No, listen. Hey, no, no, leave my shirt. Go tell the devil he doesn't belong there. But I could understand, folk. <laughs> when a woman picks up a, a, a church bench, that wooden one, that long one, with one hand, then you must know there's a lot of pastors and, and duomenes and irvar, irlegvar, they're going to run. You know why? The absence of the supernatural presence of God in the house of God preserves religion. It creates, a, the devil is the most religious creature on the planet. Every time you study a false religion, he just started another one. You will never know all of them. Rather know Jesus, the light and the darkness shines up, shows up. Rather just know Jesus and you will find that that darkness has no right. <laughs> so in this, in this church, 
Bradley is standing on top of the table of the, of the church. You know, some people, you can't, you can't, yeah, you can't get onto certain things. It's so re, you know, it's like a golden calf, man. I get in there. This lady is standing with this. Bradley is standing on the table. And he's saying to me, I said, hey, Brad, he says, Dad, now we're busy with her. Bradley is 10 years old. He's on the table. He says, Dad, we just sang How Great Thou Art. And all these people ran out by the door. <laughs> so they didn't mean what they were singing. He said, but well, we're going to cast out this devil, Dad. So we and Brenton is there. Come out in Jesus' name. And I mean, you know, if it doesn't move, you have a big brother. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Jesus shows up even if you're 10 years old, even if you're 14 years old. Doesn't matter if you're 100 years old. Jesus will show up. Why? I told you to cast out devils. You didn't tell me you're going to cast out devils. I told you to heal the sick. You didn't tell me you're healing the sick. I gave you the commission to cast out devils, heal the sick. And today I will show up because I said that. Then the Lord teaches us a second thing. The lady drops the desk, this bench. I get to her. I said to her, you know that I'm not going to negotiate with you. We don't discuss who you are, where you come from. I only know one name. His name is Jesus. And every other name is subject to him. So I'm going to waste time from who sent you. Where did you come from? You're just not supposed to be here, period. Why? Because we like this kind of spiritual nonsense. You can't, like, like Prophet said last night, you can't cast out the devil here. What about the children? Brother, you know what you're saying? You're saying that the person has no will. Devils can just enter your life like that. Not even God enters your life without your permission. You have to ask him to come into your life. You have to invite him to come into your life. He's a gentleman. He knocks at the door of an Israeli home where they sin inside the house. And he's saying, if you allow me to come in, I can change all of that sin to have fellowship again. That's Jesus. Knocks at the door. And as I bend down towards her, she spits right here in my face. Boom. The spit is hanging here. I'm looking at this. And I love it. The Holy Spirit says, don't get distracted. You came for the person, not the spit. And I just... <laughs> Do you know what a joy it is? You know why that spit happens, Kevin? Is to take you from the spiritual realm to the natural. So that in the natural, the enemy will eat you like dust. Why? Because I curse you, serpent. That's God when he becomes a prophet. He says, from, the, from your belly you will crawl all the days of your life and you will eat dust. Every carnal person in the house of God is breakfast for the enemy. Breakfast, supper and lunch. Because who comes from the dust of the earth? You and I. You must stop feeding him with unforgiveness in you. You must stop feeding him with bitterness in you. You must stop feeding him with disappointment because somebody in the ministry never recognized you. And then you step into the ministry. He is Lord in that space for you. Because Jesus says, he has nothing in me. So you got to grow up saying, by the blood of Jesus, he, this devil, has nothing in me. I've let it go. It will not have a say in my life. Devil, I gave you 20 years of my life. Now I'm giving the rest for Jesus. Clean me out from head to toe. I want to love in the supernatural resurrected power of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So, uh, somebody say with me, you come from God in order to come with God. Anybody who comes from God never comes to a place without Him. He's the Alpha and He's the Omega. He's the beginning and He's the end. What He really is saying, 
Neville, I am the beginning, not a beginning. I am the Messiah, not a Messiah. I am the life, not a life. In other words, there's no other life like this. Folk, <laughs> you must know I didn't come to Jesus because I felt I was a social misfit. <laughs> I tell him Jesus is not a church at our church. I go play golf. I go walk on the beach, run. I haven't got time to kind of keep a lot of people happy who's not hungry for Jesus. You spend 90% of your time just to get Christians happy. And then you ask them, did you ever bring one sinner to Christ? Man, you got so much power in you. No, I brought them to church. Bring them saved, man. Hello. I got four friends who are very critical of me and I love them. We're good buddies. But they used to come and they don't do it anymore. They used to come to our church. <laughs> And then they would sit in church looking at how the servant, one is agnostic, one is atheist, the other one is, is a Muslim. And the fourth one, you don't know what he is really. Because if they say this way, he goes that way. You know, it's like a bat. You don't know if it's a bird or a mouse, you know, so you can fall either way. But they used to come to our church and then they would come afterwards, you know, before we hang out, they would they say, Nev's at, at meeting was powerful, bro. Oh, hey. I don't know what those guys were talking about. That's their vibe. They talked to me. None of them saved. But they come to church. You see, demons also come to church. So I'm sitting there after one meeting. Our church is weird. We will take the blood bank and say, come on Sunday, park all the vans. They only come to church on a Sunday. You can get a pint from everybody. They're coming to church. So the blood bank has got all their vans parked out there by the church. So the camera guys show me how the people are laying there. And then I see one of our friends is also lying there. Muhammad. <laughs> they comes in. Next moment they all walk in. I see they were well, giving blood and so on, donating. And then the next thing, one of our guys get up, you know, like Chris would motivate and would carry the grace for giving. He gets up, takes up the tithes and offerings. Well, of course, they think it's all part of church, so they also put in the offering. And then I get up, preach, teach, work with signs, wonders, and miracles of God, work with the Holy Spirit. And then I make an altar call. Give everybody an opportunity to find life. Guys, I don't want you to join the church. I just want you to live, man. How, how many of you know, <laughs> after the meeting, the criticizing part is waiting. So I come out of church, they there, and <laughs> one of them come up to me and say to me, can we just talk to you just for two minutes, man? Just two minutes. He says, tell me something. Is this church always like this? When you come here to this church, they take your blood. They take your money. And then you get up to take my life. No way. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing anything like that. You cannot do all of this. This is not going to happen. Let me tell you something. Let me just turn that around for you. When you work miracles with God, we are not going to allow that devil to keep you in bondage. We're going to fight for you. We're going to let him know there is nothing that God cannot do. You are not alone. We are here to get you out of your mess and make Jesus Lord of your life so that you can make it happen for somebody else. Now watch how he works. Say with me, Rabbi. We know that you are a teacher sent from God. Say with me, come from God, come with God, and I'm also sent by God. Evidence is the supernatural acts of God. But listen, when you see everything happening that prophet is doing, you see us move in the Holy Ghost, and you do not see the one who is using him, you've lost a great part of it. Hear me. Because the one who is using us is going home with you. 
He's going to do exactly the same in your house because you come, we come from God to be a blessing to you so that you can be a blessing to your family, your children. And we pay that price. We will pay that price for us to fast 40 days and 40 nights. It's too, it's too little. Every year, three times sometimes. Because every time I see God's people not having their freedom, I'm back in the secret place. I talk to God about you. I look at, for example, what God can do through you and in you. The evidence is not the healing only. Yes, I'm healed, but it's the one who healed you. Don't miss that. The fact that you got a job is not just the blessing to get the job. It's the one who went from your house. The Holy Ghost went into the boardroom. The Holy Spirit picked up your application, put it on the table, and somebody finds out that the Spirit of God had moved things around, that the Holy Ghost is active in this environment. You know, I, I, I don't want you to be religious, really. You know, we have COVID. I go to the uh, Nilesh, very wonderful friend. And you know what? The board of the Hindu environment gives us their hall to work in. And God performs signs, wonders, and miracles. God is not a Christian. God is God. Hello. He works wherever you just find a human being. He'll work there. If you're a sinner tonight and you haven't found Christ, you qualify for divine attention. You qualify for divine attention. We close nightclubs, but we bring the glory of God in there. We close movie houses, but we bring the glory of God in there. We come into super malls, and we bring the glory of God into it. God is not religious to the point that He will not be God. Just give Him a human being who's got a greater need, and you'll see a greater manifestation of God. I want to close in a moment. The supernatural power of God is a partnership between God and man performing miracles. There's nothing that God will do without you. You can dream about all those great dreams until you move with Him. Joshua, let me talk to you, Joshua. If you were here tonight to testify about Jericho, what did you say? He says, when He said, I'm giving you Jericho, he said, you're not going alone. You walk around Jericho, I make the walls fall. You do, you do this, I make the walls fall. He says, there's a little boy with fish and bread amongst here. There's 5,000 men. You know, you think, about, you think we preach long. You must meet Jesus, brother. <laughs> Jesus preaches until you're hungry. Paul is even worse. Paul is so addicted to his message, he, he preaches until you're dead. Then he raises you from the dead and he finishes his message. He will finish the message. Wow! <laughs> it's a partnership. The whole of creation is built on partnerships. Ecosystem is a partnership. Husband and wife is a partnership. That's why it's so difficult. God who is God Almighty says, let us make man. Not let I make a man. The woman with the issue of blood, she, <laughs> she touches the hem of his garment. But it's a partnership. God doesn't do anything. That's why you see Jesus, how does he work this? Um, I, 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 he, doesn't, he never says, let me help you with the miraculous. He never says, I see you blind. Because if you agree with something, it's going to stay like it. It's a law in heaven. I, I see you have cancer. Now you pray, cancer, come on. Stop leaving, brother. You just agreed with cancer to stay there. You're acknowledging cancer. You're acknowledging the headaches. You're acknowledging the sleepless night. You forget the laws of heaven. He's not telling the, the Lord what to do. He's asking Ask the Father, not tell the Father. You must go with me one day to heaven. I was there. 2004, died three times. 
but I'm still here today. Unfinished business. Amen. Unfinished business. And I'm going to finish this business. We're going to finish this business. Why? Because it works like this. It, Jesus, there's a little boy who wants to partner with you. He actually came to this environment to sell food as a Jewish boy. Believe me, Jews, <laughs> Jews never let an opportunity to make money go past them. <laughs> Jesus is a Jew, brother. <laughs> so he... No, the little boy comes up to Jesus. The question I have for you, what is that little boy's name? Because it seems like we think the miraculous only works with big names. How many Benny Hins are hidden? How many Reynard Bonkers are hidden? How many Smith Wigglesworths are hidden? How many prophets are hidden? Why? Because I don't know the boy's name, but I know he had a partnership with Jesus. And when he partnered with Jesus, 5,000 men, husbands, fathers, you name them, got fed from a little boy with a no-name brand. What about the fact is, Neville, you bring me the lost, I'll save them. I'll save them. That's why on Sunday morning, 100 come to Christ. Why? It's the greatest harvest is on its way. How do I know that? God is accumulating all the movements of all the years. I testify about this because, you see, if you don't see the partnership, why must God move with me when He never sees me? Hmm. Why must God do signs, wonders, and miracles when I love ministering without Him? I don't like preaching, really. I just love God. That's why in this environment, tomorrow we're going to establish this environment for the next move of God to take us there. Let me tell you, just by the grace of God, it's a holy, holy, holy moment. Why? Because folk, you know, for God to raise the dead in our time, you must understand it's divine favor. You're only allowed to live once and die. And some people want to raise the dead who's never even prayed for a dog to be healed. I practice on my own dog to raise the dead. Because dogs don't speak back. You know what I mean? They just believe. Next morning, beauty is up. Very ugly looking dog. But I call the things that are not as though they were. You know what I mean? That's me. <laughs> I look at him. That's my prayer partner. Into the hills, three days and nights. In the darkness, every day in the bush area, in the hills praying. If you want the glory of God, it's not cheap. I just want you to know that. You see, when you say God must move, if that cloud moved and you were in the wilderness, you just put your family into a house. Then we're moving. Uproot. You see, moving with the glory is a moment and many moments of uprooting. You uproot, but nothing can stop. Can you imagine for a Hebrew boy? In the daytime, the Philistines, right? The tabernacle is in the wilderness. God has a partnership with Moses, right? We don't even testify. We just say to you, Kevin, that fire you see there, that's our God. He's just trying to tell us he's in the house. Next morning, I come to you, I say, Kevin, I know I, I was staying here for a while, but my family and I, we're moving. Why are you moving? No, Kevin, check the cloud, it's moving. So every time the cloud moves, we are led by the Spirit of God. And they that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Son, what's your name? Tian. Tian. So after me. I feel like I'm bang. I don't know if I'm going to get back from after me. I don't know. I'm right. Okay, when I'm going to get back to me, I'm going to get back to me. Now watch this. Watch this. As I move, right? You stay here just for a moment, right? As I move, I'm going to show you what really happens. They that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. 
So when the Holy Ghost leads and he does this, he must see Tian behind him. If he doesn't, it just means there's no following. Which simply means he's going to do nothing. His partnership is I lead you to the place where I tell you who he is. I tell you who she is. I tell you what sickness and disease in that one. That's why he's the most unemployed part of your life. He's the spectator in everything. Now watch this. Can you understand why we don't get tired, Tian? Hey, do not leave there, buddy. He's doing all the work. And we just move with him. Now, I want to encourage you. God works with four, Tian Yimakma said. You may, be, you may be seated. God works with rhythm, timing, working all things together called synchronization. And then there's a movement. That's why I see for you guys that work in the ushering or you stand behind. Every time there's a pause, you're affecting flow. It's not about being spectacular. It's not about, we want people to be delivered. We want them to be set free. Don't pause the flow. Don't stop the flow. Keep flowing. Keep moving. Synchronize diversities of God. New waves of God coming. It's got nothing to do with being spectacular. It's got nothing to do with it. Amen. Sorry, man. There's a young man here that drew my attention. Come here, son. What's your name? Okay, I want to say it to the church. <laughs> you know, while I'm busy ministering, let me tell you how this works. You see, the moment I step out to activate the Holy Ghost, you shall receive power when? After the Holy Ghost comes upon you. When does it come upon you? When you're a doing Christian, not a knowing Christian. I know the power of God is on me, right? Now watch. Now you know. <laughs> Tell me something. Who is Philip in the Bible? Huh? Hmm? Philip was a. Eh? He was one of the deacons. Huh? He was what? Right? Now I've come all the way from where I come from, which is the Psalm 91. And God said, This is the season for harvesting. Right? What's your name? Philip. Right? His name is Philip. Right? Now, what am I saying to you? We will miss it if Philip is in the house and God says we're reaching souls. We are coming for souls. That evangelical spirit must rise up. It cannot be just knowing. Now, Philip. While I say that, I am at the space of saying, Holy Ghost, I acknowledge your presence. What's next? What does he? Mia, you help me. How old are you? 14. Go pick up the streams. Right? And you're going to see in Kruger's door, God said 14. God comes here into Centurion, God says 14. God is not changing it. God has done it. God will do it. And He will do it again and again and again. He's just wanting to find one man, one woman that will believe that He's the Messiah, that He is the fish, and that He's the one that is looking for a spirit of evangelism. We cannot have great meetings. And have friends go to hell. God equipped us for it. Come up here, Philip. Wow. <laughs> Your top attracted me. Relay. Oh, yes, it is relay. I thought it's relax. Right? It is relay. What am I here to do? I'm here to relay and impart. To all of you all of you to find what God wants but to understand the number 14 the number 14 on the Hebrew alphabet is the, is the name Nun N-U-N the reason why Nun is attributed to the Messiah is because the N in the beginning is the beginning and in the end at the back is the end so he's the beginning and he's the end he's the first and he's the last he's the alpha and he's the omega so when you find him like this being in the house he's gonna raise up the evangelical heart 
prophetically you will see the fullness of prophecy rise up where you will walk to a sinner and you'll be able to tell him it's okay God shows me you have a hernia it's leaving God through the prophetic graces the word of knowledge all of those things come why you say you say to me I don't have money really I show you how you get it when you partner with God show you how it works so what does nun means the symbol for nun in Hebrew is fish it's fish Jesus says I will make you a fisher of men a fisher of men now I want to teach you something you know you could be in the meeting and you could have fallen asleep six, seven, eight times. You know, <laughs> Let me tell you. So Moses, Moses is known in Hebrew, the big fish. That's Moses. So a fish can't die in the Nile River. And a fish can't finish its destiny in sand or lice or blood. It has to find the Red Sea. So you will know, Philip, I'm, I'm actually giving a word of knowledge for you. You will see God bring out a, an evangelical grace over your life. I know tomorrow night we're going to trust God for mantles to be released. All over the building, all over what God wants. Where he, doesn't matter the age, doesn't matter how old you are. There will be mantles for business. There will be mantles for orphanages. There will be mantles for bringing about ideas into the earth. Because God is about to bring confidence in another generation. A year two and a half. As you That's your full name, Philip Lodewijk Schultz. Wow. Niemand gaat jou missen. Right? Let me, let me help us church quickly. You see, the destiny in Philip. What is the destiny of Philip? It's not just a name like we would say, you know, uh, like for example, Daniel is judge of God. You know what, Philip? You start off with the letter P. It means the mouth of God. So an evangelist moves, it's the mouth of God that speaks. The H in your name means, straight after you speak, it means ministry in word, deed, and expression. So when you look at this new level of evangelists rising up, they're going to come with what? With the mouth of God speaking the voice of God is going to come out of them and when they minister they will find out that the ministry has got nothing to do with I'm tired it's got to do I'm so glad God showed up I saw so many things happening God has done something more than enough then you got two L's in your name mm -hmm. did you notice something the P is in the front and the P is at the back he's the beginning and he's the end but in the middle of the destiny of your name, you're going to grow up being a freak for the order of God. Oh yes, you're going to grow up saying it's out of order and God will bring it back into order. You know what will happen eventually? You start off as a deacon serving the house. Tell you how it works. This partnership brings out great men in the ministry. You see, servants get closer to royalty. The queen's servants know the toothbrush she uses. Not the diplomats who come in the three-piece suits. She knows at what side of the bed the queen gets up. Is the woman who cleans her room. Servants today want to be servants, not sons. You must be a son who serves. I want to make a statement to help you. God did not send an apostle. He didn't send a prophet, a teacher, or an evangelist, or a pastor. He didn't send them. I tell you who he sent. He sent a son. And in the son, he puts an apostolic grace. He puts a prophetic grace. He puts an evangelical grace. It is sons that will reach the world, not just gifts. 
it's sons who are gifted who owns the passion of the Christ who's not gonna stop at anything let me tell you something my son Brenton was five years old I said to him um, uh, Sundri is barren that is going to Auntie Sundri's place I look at him he says daddy can I ask a question we are in the house now so Sundri and Pragasan is sitting there and she's gonna adopt somebody that very same year they busy with the adoption papers so I come with him into the house and he doesn't ask me for permission he goes to Sundri and he says Auntie Sundri do you want a baby she says yes he says you should have asked Jesus and he would have given you a baby we have a nephew today five years old before the papers could come Divya was born today Divya has got more than four degrees doctors a uh, doctor and a lot of stuff out of barrenness comes great things out of barrenness comes things that you don't let me tell you I can feel the Holy Ghost here just by the grace of God everybody just pray in the Holy Ghost I want to pray give me your hands Father, in the name of Jesus the Christ, lift it up, lift it up. I feel the presence of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, upon this life, the fire of God go from his feet right up to his head, Lord. Every part of him receive from God a mandate today in which you're going to grow, you're going to grow, you're going to grow, you're going to grow. Everybody pray out loud in the Holy Ghost. This is about to happen to you, to every man every woman in the name of Jesus where's your father is he is he still alive or what yeah that's what I'm trying to get to the Lord is telling me your dad passed on right so you with your mom or was, was with you your mom also passed away I want to you with your brother let me tell you something you see out of death comes resurrection power are you with me you are not alone God has heard the cry inside of you. You know what would have been good? You know what you would have felt like? If daddy was here and he just saw me now. It would be so powerful. But daddy is seeing you. There's a father in heaven that will not forget you. You see son, we grow up upset with him. Why do you take my mom? I mean God, are you okay? And then we forget there's a time set for all of us your time is to live now and out of barrenness and death you will be fruitful for God amen just give Jesus you give Jesus a hand of praise come on snap your hands come on Every eye closed, every head bowed. Stay on your feet just for a moment. You are here tonight. I'm going to activate you. And believe God with you. Philip, the Lord is here. For those of us in the building, you come, but you don't know Christ in the, in the way you should. I want to pray for you and break that devil's curse over your life. Amen. I want to take you out of church and bring you into the Christ. Amen. And if that's you, just lift your hand quickly. Don't worry about anybody. I want Jesus to come into my life. God bless you. God bless you. Just quickly. Quickly, quickly. Don't worry about anybody. This is not the time you think. This is the time you do. God bless you. 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 This is not an auction either. This is about taking you out of the kingdom of darkness and bring you into the light of God. 
Amen. You can't live your second best. You got to live in the best that God has for you. You cannot live in the shadow of other people's greatness. You got to live in the shadow of the Lord God Almighty and see others come. If you've raised your hand, come quickly up to the front, quickly. Just come up here. Stay with me, Philip. Stay with me. Just come quickly. Just leave where you are. Don't worry. Just come. Just come. It's okay. It's okay. Just come. Don't worry about anybody. It's not their business. It's not who they are. It's who he is. It's who he is. It's who he is. We give you the glory, God. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. There's nobody. That's right. Just walk away. Just walk away from yesterday and enter a new level of the glory of God. Let me tell you something. You see Philip here. Come up here to me, son. You know, son, I want to tell you, all of these folk are going to grow into an era to love God, but be hungry for the presence of the Holy Ghost. See, Jesus didn't say, just get saved. He said, make disciples. But he also said, wait in Jerusalem. Let me help you with something quickly. It's not the power that you must worry about. It's where he tells you to wait because where you wait is the power. He said it's Jerusalem, Peter, James, John. It's not Bethlehem. Bethlehem has got good history in it. The Messiah was born there, but the move of God has shifted. Has shifted. See, some of you have never been hugged by a daddy. And God is going to hug you tonight and break chains that nobody thought. You know what, sir, let me tell you something. Do you know how big you would be if you just had somebody tell you when you were developing, you're doing well. You're powerful. You know what? Now we grow up trying to compete to be accepted because nobody affirmed our greatness. This is a testimony that Jesus is here saving you. This is not a testimony of uh, this, this a karaksaki. No, 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 no. Jesus is going to make the difference. Now you ask me, Pastor, look, I've been here before maybe. Let me tell you. Don't neglect the Word of God. But what? Getting it into you. The Word becomes your prayer life. Believe me. You see this young man? God takes him out of everybody here. And he has lost his dad and mom. And you might not have had the same experience. But God did not miss him. All the noise. I'm in a meeting, Philip. 10,000 men. Manakamp. 10,000 men. That field is packed with 10,000 men. God tells me, there's a boy in the middle of all of these 10,000 men. Gives me the name and all this stuff. So people that invited me are thinking, these are, these are only men here. And in the middle of that 10,000 comes out a boy of 12 years old. And the Lord tells me, now you will see me preach to the leaders of our time. When I was 12, I preached to the elders. And I tell Jesus, I submit to your preaching. You see, like you're standing here, we see you. We don't see the one who called Philip. That's the one you're going home with. That's the one. So when you work with God, I'll show you something. Put your hand on the lady right there in the corner. Just put your hand on her head. And you come back to me. No, she looks okay. Now you come back to me. Don't do more. You know, when you push her to fall, you're removing the glory that belongs to the one with whom all things are possible. Right? Just teaching you. And what, did you get tired when you put your hand on Are you tired now? I say, the reason why you're not tired is because God does the things you can't do. It's easy to put my hands rather on the sick and they will be healed. Jesus does the healing. Mm -hmm. Moses, just put your stick on the ocean. I will open the ocean. Uh, you just lay your hands. Don't worry if they don't get healed because you're not the healer. Why do you want to do what Jesus only can do? 
know what I mean? So now you don't do it because if they don't get healed, I'm not doing it. I'm trying to tell you, some of you are going into homes where there's sickness and disease. Do you understand? How many of you have sickness and disease in your home? Just put up your hand. It's okay. Now let me tell you something. All that Jesus wants is not for you to be kind of feeling, I, if I pray for them, if nothing happens. No, no. Leave God to do what He wants. If He can use you once, if He can walk into a business that's bankrupt and He uses you to turn it around, you'll start another business. If you can walk into a marriage that is not cool. The reason why I'm saying to you, we don't have a lot of time. We need you to be the difference. Amen. And don't get worried. There's enough fathers and mothers in the house to help you grow. Just stick in there. Amen. You're going to walk with me now. Okay. Everybody in the, in the front, lift up your hands to the Lord. Say with me, Lord Jesus, come into my life and change me. Deliver me. Set me free. I acknowledge that I have sinned, but you can set me free. Set me free, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let your kingdom come in my life. I declare that you are Lord of my life. That in the name of Jesus, I will and I will continue to be a blessing. Help me, fill me with the Holy Ghost and His power. In Jesus' mighty name. Now I want you in the front, you clap your hands. We're going to just lay our hands on you. I break, you clap your hands. Everybody just thank Jesus. Lord, I break every curse. Now you just walk with me. I break every curse by the fire of God. It goes in Jesus' mighty name. Those curses go. Go, lady. They go. Those curses go. Those curses go. It goes, daddy, today. Now, not tomorrow, today. It leaves you today. Today it must go. Sweetheart, you face something, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. Sir, this is your day, it's over. It's a new day by the grace of God. Receive the fire of God. Son, receive the fire of God. Now watch this. The reason why I'm saying this to you, all of this does not happen because of a formula it happens out of relationship with God that's why get close to him in the mornings don't wait for Benny Hinn to say good morning Holy Spirit uh -huh. you get up in the morning you see I didn't marry a photograph of my wife and feel the presence of God is on you you feel it okay I didn't marry a photograph I married a person. Sweetheart, come to me quickly. Put your hands on her quickly. You know the presence of God is strong on him. Receive from the Lord healing. 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 Take her. Just healing, Lord. Healing. That's right. Just healing, Lord. Healing. Heal her. Heal her. Heal her, Lord. Heal her. Heal her, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Every devil out of the pit of hell that's on an assignment from hell, I break your power, I destroy your power. You will have no say over any one of the dear ones in this house tonight. And those on the stream, I set you free in the name of Jesus, the love of God. <laughs> Listen, I want you to do something. Prophet, just do me some. Come close to me. I want you to just touch him. Come on. I want you to break some stuff. Come church, let's stretch our hands. Let's stretch our hands. Vesco ebrasco ebredenoske edredelebenamai. Vesco aruske edredelebendioske tekenamai. Vedoska androske edelebredoske tekenamande denamai. For son, I hear this for the Lord say that you will see how I will come in as the spirit of adoption and I shall be a father to you like you've never experienced 
Father, as I place a gift and a mantle upon your life, for even before the foundations of this world, I have ordained you to be an evangelist with a word in your mouth. But this night you shall not forget, because I will fill you with a fire, and every spirit, every curse, even in the family before, that has tried to remove the family, shall not touch you, shall not hold you, in Jesus' mighty name. Lift it up just for a moment. Birth the hour of the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, receive from the Lord. Everybody lift up your hands to the Lord. Receive from the Lord. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Spirit of the living God right now. I activate you with impartation, activation, and manifestation of God. In the name of Jesus, receive from the Lord. Receive from the Lord. Receive from the Lord. Receive from the Lord. From the Lord. Jesus, Holy Spirit. Now every hand down quickly. Those who are sick in your body, just lift your hand where you are. If you have sickness in your body, just keep it up. Just keep it up. I just want to show you something by the grace of God. If you've got pain in your body, just, just do this. Right? I want somebody, take the lady, take anybody whose hand is up, and I want you to do the following. Ask them what is their need. You must close, you must save. Amen. Hello. Is Jesus in you? Okay. All I want you to do is ask them, like Christ, what would you want me to do for you? Are you with me? And let the, if they say, I got pain in my body, pray and speak healing. Just speak healing into the body. And then ask them just to move that body. Amen. If there's pain or anything, just do it. Don't worry about me. Find somebody. And then if they move the body, check out that the pain is left. Just, I just want to do something quickly. By the grace of God. Don't be a spectator. Just agitate the enemy. That's all. And then just go, be healed, 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 be healed. In the name of Jesus, be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed. Now, in Jesus' name. Right, just hold it. All I want you to do is take the person you prayed for, ask them if there's a change, their difference. Move your feet. Yes, no, just do it. And if God has done something for you quickly, just come to me. The Lord has done something for you, just come. I just want to show you something. God has done something for you, just come. Just come. Don't worry, just come. Just come. God is God all by himself without anybody. Just God all by himself. Amen. Listen, that is why, Alan, when we move with worship, hear me quickly, right? All of you always move with the preacher. You must preach with the ministry. You're not here to open up a space. No, the presence of God has a bowl of incense before the most holy place. It's one melody away. Just one. When the Holy Spirit chooses that melody, signs, wonders, and miracles are easy. What happened to you? Somebody help me quickly. Somebody, just help me. Just ask quickly. What happened? All right, quickly. The reason why I'm saying that, that 
Did an apostle pray for you? Who's the person that prayed for you? Huh? Did you pray for? Are you an apostle? What, what role do you have? Are, 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 are you a pastor or something? Why are you not nothing? I. just want you to understand if the Holy Ghost can find a man or a woman he will do what nobody can do mm -hmm. what's your name Kim Kim you prayed for her what was her problem and, and what do you feel right now you can actually move uh-huh isn't that wonderful Stay put. You notice something? Nobody knows her. Nobody knows where she comes from, maybe. But the Holy Ghost can use anybody. Anybody. Where, where, where's Martin? Where's Martin? Martin, what happened to the lady there? So, Apostle, a whole body was in spasm. Someone prayed for her. Everything is gone. The spasms are gone. What happened to her? Neck pain, hip pain gone. Wow. Come on, what happened? Constant back pain, gone. Mm -hmm. What happened to you? Lady, Low come up here quickly. Yeah, carry on. Sorry, Apostle. Lower back pain, I know personally battled for, for years, actually. It's gone. The pain is gone. Right. Now, you... <laughs> they say you had spasms. You look so relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> What, what am I saying to you? The moment you partner with Jesus, you move from knowing to doing. And it's not your job to bring the healing. He will. But He's not going to move with you while you say, uh, Lord, heal me. Heal me, Lord. He says, go to the pool of Siloam and wash your face. It's a partnership. He says, stretch out your hand and it will be healed. He's not going to do it for you. You see, it's not... It's not impossible to God. All things are possible with, with, with God. That's why you see where I'm at. They said to me, and I, I respect the medical field very much. Because Jesus didn't say a doctor is evil. He says those who are sick needs a doctor. Dr. Luke was with him, yet not passed of the twelve. Trying to help you. At least the doctor will tell you how undisciplined you are. Now you now you healed. You go do exactly the stuff that messed up your gallbladder. <laughs> do you understand? So by the what happened to you, son? What about the glasses? Right? And what's happened? Come up to me. You say the glasses is a problem or is your eyes the problem? All right. Because I was just going to say the glasses are cool. All right. Now, let me tell you something just by God's grace. Father, I want to thank you right now. Miracles reveal that you are present. These miracles that are here reveal that you are present. And we honor you and we give you the glory. We give you all the praise. How far could you see? On that table there? Yeah, so you have to put on your specs, you see it. Okay? So that means you can see me. If that's, you understand what I'm saying? I just stand there, it's fine. Father, we bless you. I just need to drink the water that I need. You know what you're going to have to do? Stop depending upon the specs. You get lazy every day. And hear me. Every day you practice seeing. You work the works. You work the works. You get up in the morning. If you can see him, if you can see to where the glass is, is that what you can see? Even if you strain your eyes, is that what you see there? Huh? What do you see on the table? 
is a glass of water. Is it clear enough for you? More or less? Uh huh. Okay. Now, if I go further than this, can you see me here? First, because I'm handsome. Huh? Can you see me? Okay. Now, let me tell you something. You know what, what that devil does with us? He, he makes us accept our condition. And the way we work the works, we do what we don't want to do. Same thing with your career or anything you do. You must learn to love the things you don't like. Because they're important to your destiny. If you want to be a doctor, you don't like maths, you'll just get to love it, son. It's part of your destiny. So you must ask God to give you love for the things you don't want to do so that you can become what God wants you to be. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. This whole week, practice, move it. You can't see till there. Your specs take you further than that. Same principle. You do that. Does that make sense to you? So how do you practice? You do this. Come and walk a bit with me. There was no spasms. This. Yeah. this is what we call it. <laughs> church now this is how Jesus would have had church watch me we're nearly closing watch how Jesus would do it Jesus would never have somebody get healed and then just not say anything what did he do for you sir? Uh, uh, Pastor Chris prayed for actually two pains one in the chest and one in the shoulder uh -huh. he prayed to me the chest the went pain immediately left. And he said, keep on doing this. And I did it and gone. But this has been for years. I went to physiotherapy and I used cannabis oil and nothing You else. used the cannabis oil? Yes, sir. Okay. I was just... <laughs> I just wanted to make sure the two of us are not her work. You know what I... <laughs> You know... <laughs> Jesus would never be the Jesus of the Ten Commandments in, in the movies. Moses. If God had to speak to me like that, I will never take him to the neighborhood. Never. But you know what? We make Jesus. You know, Jesus is so ordinary, extraordinary. It caused Judas to kiss him, to know him from the rest. You would not know it's Jesus because he looked like us. He moved with us. Today, you just have to find the guy with the biggest gold chain and you know that's the main McCoy. Do you understand? Now, we are naturally supernatural. Now, if Jesus stood here, he'd do something like this. He would say, Peter, James, John, I spent a lot of time with you. I'm teaching you how fish. You, your bankrupt business, remember Peter? When I tell you to go fishing and throw your line in, I will bring the fish, you throw your line in. I will bring what you need to you if you just prepare to move with me. So what he does is, he doesn't get to a place of saying, hey guys, I think it's over. No, no, he goes like at Peter, James, John, all the teaching that I'm giving you, this is it. This is what it's all about. Get people out of their pain. Get them delivered. Get them set free. Give them reason to live again. Give them the will to build again. Now let's give Jesus a praise offering because he's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the glory. I want you to give him praise for 30 seconds out of your innermost being. Signs, wonders, and miracles of God. sing a song let's worship God just worship him let's give him the glory don't stop just give him more we opening up the heavens here we opening up the heavens in Cape Town open up open up open up in the name of Jesus open up
church, let's just give him a praise offering. Let's celebrate what he has done. Come on, don't stop praising him, praise. Amen. Amen. We trust that you've all received the word, that you're all activated to be workers of miracles. Amen. You've not just received the word, but you've also received the ability to demonstrate the kingdom of God right where you are. Now I want to encourage you guys, do not miss tomorrow night. We're going to have an anointing service and we're going to see mantles imparted. We're going to see the power of God fall in this place tomorrow night. I want to encourage those that are at home. If you can make tomorrow night, make sure you come here early. Every person here, come here early to make sure that you get a good seat. We cannot wait to see you all tomorrow night. God bless every single one of you. We'll see you then. Amen.